Hey gang, Scott Davenport here and welcome to Impost. Thanks for joining me today. Well, today's video is in on one using some of their filters to do some finishing touches on a photo. Two things before we dive in. First, if you have not watched In the Field, which I showed earlier this week, it'll show you the hike that I took up the Bubbles Divide Trail to capture the photo I'm gonna finish off here today. Second is if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel and you've been enjoying the videos here, really appreciate it if you'd hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you'll know when I post a new video. With that, let's take a look at this photo here. I've got it loaded in on one. I've done my basic processing in Lightroom, that's my workflow, and what I want to get out of this photo is just a little more uh, oomph in the colors, just a little more pop in the colors here and some of the details in these rocks. So why I wanted to bring this into on one to do this is because it'll be fast and easy. So let's deal with color first. I'm gonna add a color adjustment filter in effects and just hit fall. And that's all I need to do is, you know, nice pop on the colors there and it's just it's just a wonderful accent and if anything can visit the oranges and maybe tone that back ever so slightly just a little bit so these aren't too uh too day glow now the same idea for the sky we'll use a second color adjustment filter and appropriately called sky now i want to point out one thing with this filter is there are some blue tones in the rock the balanced rock itself that i don't want to have impacted so watch watch this area of the rock right here before that blue sky filter and then after that's just getting too much there so i can go into our masking tools and i have a masking brush it's set to paint out let's just make the brush a little bit smaller with the bracket key opacity 100 percent and i'll just remove that from the rock my brush stroke does not need to be particularly accurate or like you know sensitive i don't need the edge detection because i'm really just affecting the amplification of blue taking it away from that rock face and so now that's toned back down it's not making that blue it's letting the sky be more natural and the reflections that are in this pool here and across these little other spots where there's moisture on the rock that's great Last thing here, uh, well, maybe second to last thing, is dynamic contrast. That's going to give us some texture on the rocks. Now, I apply dynamic contrast, and we can see it's applied everywhere to the entire scene. The rocks look great. I don't want as much crispness in the background you know, before and after. I kind of like that soft feel to it. So I think what I'll do for this photo, maybe some in the trees, but not all, and then I really don't want it in the sky at all. So let's again have our masking tools. We saw the masking tools active actually. Let's get a gradient, linear top. Notice the black bar on the top of that little swatch there. That's telling me I'm going to mask away from the above area. If I view that mask, view, you can see I've just got a nice gentle gradient that's put on the scene. That's taking away the contrast from the sky. So already before the contrast, after, it's limited to just the foreground. And the second thing I'll do is use the masking brush, paint out, but I'll use a lower opacity. And let's take that down. Let's just make it a half strength eh, around there. Okay. And then just start brushing through this area. Now I'll do the, the big areas first so that those are easy to do. And then I'll get in the, uh, the corners and so forth with the perfect eraser, or sorry, the perfect brush, which will give me my edge detection. So we'll get through there. And let's go ahead and switch our masking mode to red overlay. I'll turn on the view so you can really see what's going on here. Okay, so we'll bring that up, swoop around here. And I want to get as much of this done as possible without turning on the edge detection. And that's just for speed. Edge detection takes more processing power, and so that slows down the masking just a little bit. And there's no need to have that turned on for these big areas that are easy to brush. Okay, with that, we'll turn on the brush. We'll make that kind of smaller. And we'll just inch our way around the edges here. This does not need to be exact. I will clean up things that I'm touching the rock on because this is going to get blended. There'll be one more adjustment I'm going to do here that you'll see in a moment to kind of just smooth out that mask edge. And this is the only place I have to clean up. Shift X. So now I'm painting back in. And I can add that crispness back in on the edge of that rock. That's great. We'll turn off 
the mask. And the last thing I want to do is the refine brush. Well, here we have the blur mask tool. So this just softens the edges. And let's make the amount somewhat small. If I double click on the icon in the tool well, that automatically adds a softness to the entire edge of the entire mask. So if I turn that back on, uh, this will be a little hard to see on the, uh, on the video here, but all these little edges that I've painted around, they've just gotten softer now. And it looks like I missed a little bit of my, uh, my work here, right along that edge there. Great. Okay, cool. So now before and after, very last thing to do is add a vignette. I like the subtle vignette. That one just works very well for me. I even back that off strength-wise just a little bit. So I'll add it up. A couple of color changes, some dynamic contrast to the rocks, and a vignette before those adjustments and after. Just a nice finishing touch to a photo. Very easy to do with on one, and uh, the masking tools really helped out with dynamic contrast. And that's going to do it for the photo and the video. And I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, let me know somehow. Comments on the video below are great. Got a question about photography? Hit me up in the comments or share it through my website if you want to keep it private. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport, and happy shooting.